Malcolm Cameron died in Port Sarnia on the first day of June 1876. Following his burial in Lakeview Cemetery, Judge McWatt said of Cameron that his open and frank countenance and demeanor won for him many staunch friends. His business tact recommended him to party leaders, and whenever the opportunity offered, he was a faithful and diligent public servant. A plaque along the Sarnia waterfront says that among its prominent early residents were Richard Vidal, George Durand, and the Honorable Malcolm Cameron. Was this the real Malcolm Cameron? Or might he better be described as a rogue, a rascal, an opportunist? Let me tell you about his time here in Lambton County, and you can come to your own conclusions. Born in Trois Rivières in 1808, he went west in 1834 and purchased 100 acres of land from Dominique Laforge, one of the original French settlers in this new community known as Les Rapides, a community that was later named Sarnia, a name suggested by Cameron. Here with Richard Vidal and George Durand, he began buying and selling land, engaging in commerce, dominating the life of this community. Cameron became a lumberman, general merchant, ship owner, shipbuilder, miller, land speculator, and through much of his adult life, a politician. Cameron at one time had six ships docked here in Sarnia, and in 1850, one-sixth of all the oak timber shipped from Canada to Great Britain was shipped by him from Lambton County. Malcolm Cameron was involved in the building of at least two plank roads. In the 1830s, the route from Port Sarnia to London was by way of the Lakeshore Road to Errol and then by the Agremont Road through Warwick to London. At the time, Errol had hopes of becoming the county town. A group headed by Cameron, Durand and Vidal wanted a road straight through from Port Sarnia to Warwick. Even though the road would be more costly, built through swampy sections and more expensive to maintain, it would be more direct and would open up more territory in the interior of Lambton. Since the group held considerable real estate along the proposed route and Cameron controlled timber rights along much of the route, they all stood to gain by the building of the route. In 1835, permission was granted and a road was built from Sarnia to London. Completed in 1844, at least seven miles of this road through swampy sections was planked. Now on to 1858-59. Again, Cameron was involved in the building of what we now know as the Plank Road. Along with George Duran, the city of Sarnia and other investors, Cameron brought into being the route which would help to move oil from Oil Springs to Sarnia to be processed and shipped out. The investors hoped for a hefty return through the charging of tolls to all vehicles using the road. Unlike the other investors, Cameron had a second or perhaps primary reason for promoting the Plank Road route. Cameron owned some of the then swampland and more importantly, most of the timber rights for the lumber along the route, which would be used to build the road. More than 17 miles of 10 foot long hardwood planks. Malcolm Cameron, a teetotaler, preached temperance to all. However, he had no qualms about having an open bar at political rallies while running for office or when working on a business deal, be it for land, timber rights, shipping, or any of his many other mercantile interests. Many of his political opponents said that he was just like an old coon sitting up in a tree watching to see on which side to jump. Perhaps his biggest and most controversial deal was his acquiring of land which belonged to the Chippewa people. 
During the late 1830s, Cameron brought 100 acres of land then occupied by Dominic LaForge in what is now southwest Sarnia at a cost of 400 pounds from Elijah Harris, the deputy of the local Indian agent. The land was divided into lots, some sold through the 1840s and the rest at a public auction in 1857. He also bought the timber rights to the Indian Reserve in 1862, an area which he denuded of a forest of oak, probably to help build the plank road and or to ship to England. Malcolm Cameron died in 1876, a poor man, a man who preached temperance, sometimes only when it suited his goals, a man who started with nothing controlled a lot of cash and assets over his life, only to die in debt. Was Malcolm Cameron a rogue, a rascal, an opportunist, a visionary, a builder? What do you think?